Hey guys, welcome back to New Sustainers. We discuss comics, movies, games, and more. And tonight, I'm going to be reviewing episode five of Loki: Journey into Mystery. Now, you can tell by the title that this episode is going to be filled with Easter eggs, and it is, and it did not disappoint. They were talking, I'm like, I'm talking about Easter eggs left and right. You have to like rewatch it to catch all of them, because boy, oh boy, are there plenty of it. Anyways, Loki episode five: Journey into Mystery was amazing. It was really fun, aside from the Easter eggs. What the best part was, and this is the episode I've been waiting for, is the fact that we got to see a bunch of Lokis in this episode. We're talking about like 10 plus Lokis. We saw President Loki. We saw classic comic book uh, Loki played by Richard Reed, I believe. And we saw, uh, I guess you can call him the uh, the boastful Loki, kid Loki, alligator Loki. You know, they're all in this episode. And they all meet and greet. They go to their lair where they're hiding from this gigantic cloud um creature that you can't really harm or you know fight basically it, who goes by the name of Alioth. it can't basically be defeated but basically they're trying to figure a way uh, out a way from like getting off of this planet where they're at they're at the ends of time uh only because these lokis and everything else that's on this planet got pruned and apparently pruned doesn't necessarily mean that you get erased completely or reset or die. The TVA doesn't have that kind of capability of just basically erasing somebody completely or killing them. Um, it, everybody just gets sent to this place where there's no way out, apparently. So we cut to Sylvie, Loki, who had Rain, uh, who had Renslayer, um, making her tell her what happened to Loki and what happened to Mobius, basically, when they got pruned. Apparently, Renslayer does know more than we thought. Uh, Renslayer has an idea about the timekeepers. Uh, she knows who she may know who's behind all this. She knew all about the pruning. Apparently, it you know she was aware that what had happened to people when they get pruned, and I think she has some evil tendencies. And I think Renslayer's character is going to be for further developed once we get to the Ant Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania movies because Kang the Conqueror might be behind all of this. Kang the Conqueror does have a love relationship with Renslayer if you don't know, um, in the comics. But aside from that, Sylvie basically prunes herself so that way she can be back with Loki. If you recall in the last episode, episode four, she had a happy memory, but she didn't say what it was. But I'm thinking that Sylvie's happy memory was basically being with Loki at the time they were together on the Mantis uh, because they were falling in love, if you couldn't tell. But I think that story's gonna be further developed perhaps after all this is done because now Loki needs to get done right away. They need to get through this really quickly because there's only six episodes. So next Wednesday will be the last episode of Loki, at least for season one. Uh, apparently they got approved for at least two or three seasons, if I'm not mistaken. Um, <clears throat> so we get on this place at the end of time, bunch of Lokis there, a lot of Easter eggs. You know, there was like the Thanos ca uh, copter. If you don't know, Thanos actually had a helicopter in the comics. It was kind of cool to see that, you know, rusted and dirty. Uh, there was Throg, who's Thor as a frog, who made a brief appearance in the glass jar. I mean, wasn't really too hard to miss. Uh, I did have to play it back a couple times and pause just to make sure that what I was looking at was an actual frog dressed as Thor. And um, we even saw like, <clears throat> you know, Kid Loki, of course. That wasn't an, uh, a hard Easter egg to miss. I mean, that kid Loki is a character, except that he's a good version of Loki in the comics. And then we also have like the episode titled Journey Into Mystery, which is also an Easter egg in itself. Uh, if you've ever read any comic books, Loki's very first appearance was Journey Into Mystery, uh, number 84. And that was actually basically the basis of Thor's comic books, which were titled Journey Into Mystery. And it was really cool to see all these Easter eggs, you know, um, that whole thing about Loki going like, come on, what did you expect when, you know, President Loki? That was kind of a one-off thing. It was kind of funny seeing how all these Lokis were out of order. They can't trust each other. They were be betraying each other. Uh, they were just basically double-crossing each other back to back. And it was really insane to see this. And to the original Loki, we'll call it our Loki, Tom Hiddleston, um, he sees this as a total nightmare, how it's everything's out of control, Everybody's a t every Loki's a total whack job, and it was really fun to see that. Owen Wilson's character, Mobius, comes back. Uh, no surprise there if Loki was alive in the last episode when he got pruned, so is Mobius. At least we know where all the characters go when they get pruned, and it's this planet. Now, I gotta hand it off to uh, Alligator Loki. He really stole this episode. What's funny is that there's this ambiguity whether like this alligator is really truly a Loki or not. You know, it, it's it kind of sets the tone, sets the tone of like a, what a Loki is. You know, you're not sure what he is. Um, like, can you really trust him? Is he lying? 
Uh, what we know is that Lokis basically survive. They may lose frequently, but they survive. And that's what all these Lokis did on this planet, where like there's this like eating cloud that consumes all of matter, no matter what. Uh, people, ships, cars, land, energy, whatever. They consumes, it consumes energy. So the overall goal behind this is to find out who's behind all of this, behind the TVA, behind the team, uh, timekeepers, who were who turned out to be androids in the last episode if you didn't see it and apparently this alioth uh cloud creature is also a character from the comics who's faced renslayer and other various heroes in the comics this alioth creature is serving as a guard dog now you can't really physically fight it or hurt it it seems like you'd have to go a little bit beyond to defeat something like that so luckily sylvie knows enchant enchantments and it's more of a, like a psychic attack so they were actually able to enchant the creature. So both Sylvie and Loki did it together. Now you may think like, well, Loki doesn't know any enchantments. How, like he's been trying to wonder how Sylvie does that from the beginning. Sylvie convinces Loki that you and I are the same. We're both Lokis, so you should know enchantment too. So they held hands and they did it together and they enchanted the Alioth Cloud, revealing some sort of citadel sitting on top of a rock at the end of time where you see the like the white time stream right like behind them. And I'm thinking, like, whoever's behind this is some sort of version of Loki, or perhaps we might even see a glimpse of Kang the Conqueror, maybe even a reference of Kang the Conqueror. So this is, like, we're, we got a lot of revelations. It's getting really good, and we're just getting so close to the reveal. Uh, this is kind of playing out like a Wizard of Oz kind of thing. If you ever see the Wizard of Oz, the, the man behind the curtain was kind of referenced in this episode, which was really cool to hear because it really started to feel like Wizard of Oz more... And because there was a lot of mystery, uh, even CB-15 was taken into custody. She's convinced that she is not like, well, she was not created by the, the timekeepers. She was just a variant who was snatched from her life and taken in to work for these people. So it was a really crazy episode filled with Easter eggs, great acting. Um, I love the camarad uh, like the, the chemistry that comes with, you know, both Loki and Mobius, Tom Hiddleston and Owen Wilson. And it was overall a fun show. And I'm looking forward to see how the relationship will be further developed between Loki and Sylvie. And it's kind of funny to say it because if you think about it, Loki's in love with himself. Even though they're two separate beings, they are ultimately both Loki. So overall, Journey into Mystery, great episode. I think so far now this one is my favorite episode. I know that episode four was my favorite, like I said last week. But now this one became my favorite episode. And I have no doubt that episode six will be my favorite one. Uh, still to come. So anyways, that's my review for Loki episode five journey into mystery. what do you guys think of it? Comment down below. Did you get to check it out? If you have, let me know your thoughts. Are you excited for a season two or episode six basically? And yes, that's all I got for you tonight, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and click on bell notifications so you don't miss anything. As always, I will see you all in the next comic panel.